All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook up your Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons to your Windows PC using Bluetooth and get them to work using Steam's drivers. So first, grab your Joy-Cons and have them within arm's reach, and then open up Steam and make sure it's up to date. From here, we're going to go to the Steam logo in the upper left-hand corner, click on that, and then click on Settings. Once your settings window is open, you should have a bunch of different tabs on the left hand side. Go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and click on controller. And this is where all of our controller settings are. Uh, you can buy a charging grip for the Joy-Cons that allows you to plug it in and charge them while you're playing. You can technically get them to show up on PC by plugging them into that, but they work better on Bluetooth. So we're just going to do Bluetooth. So to get them to work with Bluetooth, open up your Bluetooth settings, and then we're gonna start with Joy-Con left. On the little rail where it slides into the Nintendo Switch, there is a round button. Go ahead and give that a click until the connection lights start to dance. Once that happens, click on Add Bluetooth or Other Device, and then click on Bluetooth in the black pop-up. It should say Joy-Con L, which it does. We'll go ahead and click on that to connect it. Then we'll hit Done. And then it'll start to bing and ding and do a little couple pop-ups to let me know that it's connected. From here, I'm going to do the same thing with the right controller. I'm going to press on that little button until the lights start to dance. It's really pretty much instantaneous. And then I'm going to click on the Add Bluetooth or Other Device button again. Click on Bluetooth, and then right should show up. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to click on Done. Now, it's worth noting that Steam will treat these individually if you want them to, but the best way to use these is as a single controller that's in two pieces. The way that you can enable that is there is a button down here that says Combine Joy-Con Pairs. If you want these to function individually, untoggle this. Toggle this one to off. Otherwise, here's your options for this controller. You've got Game Rumble on or off. Use Nintendo button layout. This will switch around the buttons on screen where available to switch around the X and the Y and the A and the B because technically it uses the same buttons as the Xbox. They're just switched around. Um, you can enable universal face button glyphs on screen, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's still translating them to something else. Uh, I just recommend using just the Nintendo layout because it makes more sense because it's going to match what's in your hand. You can test the inputs for this controller to make sure everything works, which is great for diagnosing if one of your Joy-Cons is broken. You can also go through the calibration settings here. And the only other thing to really note besides if you want them to function as one controller or two by toggling on or off the combined Joy-Con pairs is you well actually it's in two places one here and one here um but you can toggle those off for these to act as two controllers if you want and you can also enable steam support for generic controllers and for the nintendo pro controllers as well i recommend leaving steam inputs on for controllers because that's going to translate anything that would normally go to an xbox controller for these instead do note that these controllers will, in a lot of games, not show up as Nintendo controls. Most of the time on games on Steam, it's going to think that these are an Xbox controller because by pretending is the way that it's going to be compatible with older games and games that don't play nice with Nintendo products. That's just what's going to happen. Just get used to it. Otherwise, uh, there's not much else to say for... Desktop layout, I've got this set to disabled for my Nintendo devices. Nintendo devices seem to have a problem with like acting funny or like a mouse when they're not supposed to when they're outside of game. Setting this official layout to disabled rather than desktop configuration or one of these other ones seems to fix that problem. I would also suggest not using the gamepad uh, shutdown timeout feature down here, which puts these to sleep 
if you haven't used them in like 15, 5, 30, 2 hours. It's a nice feature. It saves your battery, but sometimes, depending on the controllers, when they go to sleep, they don't wake back up. They're still charged, but you have to either restart Steam or reconnect the controllers or restart your computer to get them to behave again. Kind of a pain in the butt. So otherwise, that's about it. You Most of what you just have to do here is just connect these to your computer and determine which ones of these settings that you actually want on or off for this controller. This controls and has drivers for everything from Xbox to PlayStation to Nintendo, so you don't necessarily need to worry about most of these settings or options. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I also recommend turning off uh, the option to disable these when you exit big picture mode, just because I don't know a lot of people that like big picture mode. So if you don't use it, that'll keep it from turning off accidentally. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.